Good evening, guys. I am so excited to be doing this video today because I've been wanting to make this video for a very long time. But permaculture. I am nuts about permaculture. And I had, I had been reading about this for a very long time. And I've been watching YouTube videos on it for a very long time. And everything about it from the first thing that I saw made so much sense. It makes so much sense. Permaculture, the idea of not just, not just creating like an annual vegetable garden, but feeding the soil, creating a system that feeds itself. And then as a byproduct feeds you. I mean, when you put in work into a garden, don't you want to put in work that's going to last for years instead of that is only going to last for that one year or maybe even that one planting season, right? So permaculture is the idea of planting things together or creating systems that work together that help regenerate themselves. So if you have, uh, so if you have like, here, let me show you one of my main permaculture ideas uh, that I got going on in here uh, that in my food forest that is that is just a really simple idea that makes so much sense um, that is easy to wrap your head around, okay? So let's go into the food forest. By the way, my name is Ruth and this is Bay Hollow Homestead. Man, can you tell that I'm excited about this subject? It's just kind of one of the greatest things that I've ever come across. It's changed my life, completely changed my life. Okay, so the easiest example of permaculture in my food forest that's, that's quick and easy and simple to show and describe is my duck pond, okay? So my duck pond is right here. It is not pretty. I mean, it's, it's an old uh, swimming pond or a swimming pool that my kids used to use when they were babies and it got some holes in the bottom so we duct taped it at the bottom. It's not pretty, but we are using it as a duck pond. So it serves so many purposes. It serves as a place for the ducks to find refuge and swim, right? Uh, it serves as a place where if you see at the bottom here, I have a hose connected to it. I water my entire food forest and my vegetable garden. You can see there's a hose that leads to that black rain barrel right there. Uh, I fill that up with duck water and I feed my garden with it and it works because it's uphill. There's a very, very steep slope in my garden that makes it so I don't have to have a pump even in order to water with this water. Uh, and then there's also the overflow. When they splash and play in this, there's overflow, which feeds all the plants down here with that super rich nitrogen thick water because there's ducks poop a lot. So here we go. So I have a go to cola patch right here, and this is huge. The go to cola has spread and is doing so well, and I never water it because it gets fed by this duck pond up here. They splash around in it and they end up splashing water down onto this go to cola patch, which is a swamp. It's a ditch water, um, swampy type of plant. That's where it's found wild. And it's really happy here because of this. So the ducks are happy with this. It's uphill. So if there's any splashing going on, it goes downhill with no effort from me and it feeds my garden down here. I'm also able to feed my garden with the hose that's connected to it. So the idea with permaculture is create a system that works with itself, right? So this water is coming down and feeding my garden. I don't have to do anything with it. Uh, I can just, I could honestly, I could just open the bottom of it and let the water rush down and it would feed my garden. And so I don't have to worry about any uh, supplements or uh, nutrient fixers for my garden because I have that. And duck manure is honestly, it's the best manure that you could possibly put on your garden. It has all the nutrients that you need. So that is a permaculture system. 
it's easy. I'm going to be filling and, and cleaning that out anyway if I have ducks, right? So why not put it in a spot that it will also benefit other places in my garden and feed other systems like my food forest? So permaculture is this idea of just making life easier for you. If you have a fruit tree, right? Now it's the fall season, right? So a lot of my fruit trees, they're losing their leaves. But if you have a fruit tree, plant things that enjoy shade underneath the fruit tree and you've got yourself a little habitat there, right? Uh, the guilds of a fruit tree is one of the main principles in permaculture ideas. So in this whole system of, of food forests, uh, it all surrounds itself around the fruit tree or the nut tree. So we've got this apple tree, right? I've got comfrey underneath that feeds the soil and it has a thick root system that goes down deep and so it breaks up the soil so it's not compacted, right? I have strawberries underneath. That's a ground cover that really keeps back the weeds. I never weed this area because the strawberries are so thick. I've also got things like alliums growing, right? I've got things like, uh, I have, I have Menardas. <laughs> they're getting, they're at the end of their, of their uh, growing season right now. So they're a little bit down. I have, and the Menardas pull in the pollinators. The Alliums uh, provide a beneficial antibacterial, antiviral boost to the roots and therefore the tree of my fruit tree so it's more disease resistant. I have things like blueberries under here because blueberries like to grow on the edge of a forest. And so you'll see my blueberry right here is on the drip line of my fruit tree. I have annuals in here like my squashes, right? Because my strawberries have not come all the way over here to fill in that area yet. I have lupine, which pulls in the pollinators in the spring when this is blooming, and it also fixes the nitrogen in the soil. I have many different plants under here. At one point I counted and there's about 14 different varieties of plants underneath this fruit tree that they all work together. They benefit the tree, they benefit each other, they benefit uh, from the sunlight that the tree gives, from the, um, from the drip line of the tree, they benefit with the pollinators coming in, they all work together, it's a system. Okay, so it's easy to understand, right? Uh, these are all perennials as well. Uh, the only non-perennial that's in that spot is the squash, and I won't plant that next year because there won't be room for it. The perennials are spreading and they're moving in. But it sounds complicated, doesn't it? I mean, really, permaculture, like, how do you know what plants to plant under a fruit tree? How do you know what groups to put together? How do you know uh, where to place your fruit trees? You know, there's so many, there's so many non-specifics. I do karate, okay? Like, I, I really enjoy karate. Uh, in fact, in fact, I, I'm super excited. Next Friday, I'm going to be promoted to uh, master instructor, fifth uh, level black belt, so fifth degree. Um, and I'll be going from chief instructor to master instructor, uh, although they already call me master companion. That's just because of my belt level. Anyway, but um, like, I, I like karate because it's black and white. There is a right way to do something and there's a wrong way to do something. Kata is something that is very, very, it's my favorite part of karate. I love kata uh, because there is an, there's where your foot is supposed to be, the direction it's supposed to be, the angle that your knees are supposed to be bent, where your hands are supposed to be, the direction that you're supposed to be looking. Everything in a kata is specific. And I love that because there's no guesswork. It is what it is and it's right or it's wrong permaculture terrified me <laughs> because there's no book that says this is what you put under your apple trees this is what you put under your plum trees this is how you create a food forest this is how you create a permaculture garden in your garden because 
everybody's land is different. Uh, everybody's climate is different. Everybody's uh, environment, like I'm up in the mountains, you know, is very different than being, you know, next to the ocean or near the sea. Even if it was the same zone, it's different. So you're going to want to plant different varieties because different varieties do better in different places. There's so many variables. What do you do? How do you know what to do? It's easy. I promise you. It is, it is easier than breeding. Okay, so let me sit in my favorite little spot underneath my grape trellis. Okay, so you can't do it wrong. That's how easy it is. So it, it's, a, it's a level, it's a progress level. I mean, if you start with a plan, that's great, but just plant some trees. That's all you got to do. Plant some trees and then put plants underneath of it, okay? Now there are hundreds of berry shrubs that work really well underneath fruit trees. In fact, most shrubs are gonna want to live under a fruit tree or a nut tree around the drip line because that's just the environment that they grow in the wild. They grow along the edge of forests, right? Uh, you're gonna wanna put herbs underneath your fruit trees because herbs are really good at uh, fighting against uh, those pests, right? They're not gonna, the smell of herbs is very pungent and they're not gonna wanna come and, and be a part of that, that herb area, right? Uh, if you just planted squash under your fruit trees, it wouldn't be good because squash bugs come in, uh, Japanese beetles come in, and, and you don't want a monoculture, you want a polyculture. So plant varieties, lots of different varieties. Plant sage, plant rosemary, plant garlic, plant alliums, which is a garlic, I get it, but I mean like chives or something like that. Um, plant comfrey. Find, there's, there's categories that you want to have in your fruit guild, okay, or your fruit tree guild. You want to have soil builders. So that would be something like mullion or comfrey or dandelion or um, th there's so many that you can choose from and you can pick one or you can pick all of them or you can pick two. Like it doesn't matter. Just if you go online, there will be oh the guineas. I'm glad we have the sound of guineas in the background now. Uh, I've, I've missed having guineas for many years. Okay, so go online. There are lists that you can find. What are soil builders? And plant those under your, or pick some from a, you don't have to plant all of them. Just pick some, two or three, plant those underneath your fruit trees. Go and look under the list of pollinators. Plant one or two of those. Now, if you see one that does multiple things, like dill is a great pollinator and it's also an herb. Find things that are immune bo boosters for your fruit tree. So things like alliums, um, four o'clocks are great for planting underneath your fruit trees. Marigolds are great for planting under your fruit trees. Uh, find a list for immune bo boosters, for pollinators, for soil builders. Uh, find a list of ground covers and just pick one. If you have more acidic soil, pick cranberry. You can plant cranberry anywhere. You don't have to live in a bog in order to plant cranberry. They just do that because it's easier to harvest the cranberries at the end of the year if they flood the area. Um, cranberries are just like blueberries. And so if you have an area that's more acidic in its soil, plant blueberries and cranberries and lingonberries and stuff like that under your fruit trees. Um, there's going to be, there's lists of things. So there's, there's fruit shrubs, right? Pick one from that list or pick five from that list and plant it all around the edges of your tree. The best thing about a, uh, a fruit tree guild is that you can cram pack so many different types of plants underneath a fruit tree because it's on a vertical growing, uh, it's a vertical growing area. So you have shrubs which are higher they're taking up this space right well the fruit tree's taking up the top and then you've got the shrubs and then you've got the herbaceous layer right things like rosemary or lavender or something like that and then you've got the ground cover and then you've got the things that are the root systems and so you have things growing like uh, you could have daikon radishes growing right breaking up the soil loosening it up getting it ready so that all those roots from the fruit tree can reach out and really get a strong firm hold 
in the ground there and not get tied up and bound up like a root ball. Uh, you can plant vines. Once your tree is big enough, you could plant vines and they would grow up your fruit tree. So that would be another layer. There are so there are seven layers in a fruit tree system and you can plant many different plants within each layer around the fruit tree and you won't go wrong. Now, as you're growing your, your food forest, you can look around and say, oh, you know what, this plant actually ends up being really happy in this spot so I'm going to plant more of those. It's easy to grow these and so I'm going to plant those everywhere because I really enjoy blueberries. Maybe it's blueberries and you love blueberries so you're and you see they do well so you plant a lot of them, right? Find out what does well in your area uh, but just plant things. You can move plants. They're not stuck there forever. You can move them anytime you want. Now uh, and then just go through all those different layers and all those different purposes and just pick some plants and plant them. That's all you got to do. There's not a wrong way to do it uh, if you pick from that list. So like if you ever made gin, um, like if you know how they make gin, let's say it like that. Uh, I have not made gin personally, but uh, I have heard about people who do, right? And uh, the base is have juniper in it, right? As long as there's juniper in that vodka, it's considered a gin. Uh, as long as the, the juniper is like one of the main flavors. Now there are people that argue that and I would probably go with the people who argue with it and say, you know, anything herbal <laughs> would, would qualify it as a gin. It doesn't necessarily have to have juniper, but that, that's another debate for another time. But anyway, let's say the, the basis is juniper, right? In vodka so you have that's your fruit tree in a soil that you've got some mulch down on because that mulch is gonna feed the soil right and the mulch is really good for perennial plants it's gonna get that mycorrhizal fungi growing and that's just gonna be like this huge boost for your garden so we're going for perennial, we're going for no work, we're going for low input, high output. So you put in a little bit of work at the beginning and for the rest of your life, you get an abundance of food out of this area for a very, very long time, right? Um, an abundance, I don't mean a little bit like, oh look, I got five blueberries today. I mean, you get bushel loads of blueberries. That's what we're going for. And it's, all you do is you find those lists uh, just like gin, you, you got the juniper, you got the vodka. Now, any kind of botanical that you want, put it in and it's still gin. It qualifies, play with it, have fun, right? Um, you can go for sweet, you can go for spicy, you can go for, you know, very dry, you can go for very, very floral. Like, it doesn't matter, it's still gin and it'll work, right? You just know what you like. What plants do you like? Don't plant lingonberries if you don't like the taste of lingonberries. Don't plant gooseberries if you don't like the taste of gooseberries. But if you love blueberries, plant those a lot, right? If you love, um, you know, I... <laughs> Tomatoes are perennials in my food forest almost. Uh, I know they're annual, but I let the tomatoes fall to the ground at the very end of the season. And the next year, tomatoes pop up there again without me doing anything. And so it is zero input and maximum output. Now I've got all these tomatoes that I get to harvest at the end of the year because uh, I just let some fall and I let them grow up where they wanted to. Uh, there is a wildness about a food forest and it's wonderful. But the idea of permaculture is that 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 system feeds itself at the end of the year the leaves from the tree fall and it creates a mulch over all that area the comfrey dies back and it creates another mulch area all that stuff dies back right and creates a mulch that feeds the soil that then makes the soil healthier the very next year and you have even better growth the next year uh, the drip lines are really cool because the drip line for the tree is really watering the stuff that you're planting that really needs more water than anything else. More like, you know, like the, the bushes, the currants, the blueberries, uh, the cranberries, the gooseberries, whatever it is that you've decided on that you want to plant for your shrub layer. Um, something that I have learned, I would plant uh, 
if it's in a garden area, an enclosed area like mine is, because I've got these tall fences to keep out the deer, um, I would say plant, if you're going to plant raspberries or blackberries or something like that, pick thornless varieties. It'll make your experience so much fun, more fun. <laughs> Um, but if you are out in the wild, just planting in a field, plant the raspberries with the thick thorns and the gooseberries and the sea berries uh, and, the, and the, the hardy oranges around the outside of your garden. And they've got the thorns and the outside edge will feed the deer and the inside edge will feed you. But those thorns will keep them out, hopefully. That's in theory. I haven't done that personally, but I've heard that it works. Um, I've also just spoke to someone the other day. It was really cool that they, they're doing the permaculture thing too. And they said that they, uh, they plant a big field of clover and they have, it might've been chestnuts, maybe chestnuts, maybe hazelnuts, uh, that they planted over off to the side and the deer love those so much that they just feed on that the entire time and they don't bother the gardens at all. So plant for the deer so that they're happy doing their thing over where you want them to be and they're not coming into the area where you don't want them to be. Uh, and so that stuff can be for you. And then if you like to hunt, then there you go. You've got some meat there as well. And I, I love me some, some really good venison. Oh my goodness. So uh, I'm thinking that that's a, a thing that I'm going to try to do uh, this next year. So uh, permaculture, make it work for you. If you have a pond, make it come up so that you can water your stuff, right? Uh, or plant your garden below it. Uh, if you have uh, chickens, put the chickens next to your food forest or your garden so that you can throw over any of the waste stuff into them, right? And then they give you eggs off of it. Uh, that's a permaculture idea. Permaculture is planting for abundance and health uh, and not so much planting uh, just for one crop, right? And so it's going to be a little bit more wild. It's going to be a little bit more, um, uh, a little bit less organized, but so much more abundant, so much less work. I left for three weeks. Well, I wasn't gone for three weeks, but I was sick. I couldn't be in my garden uh, after my vacation. So it was a three week period where I was not in my garden and my annual garden, my vegetable garden looks not so good. I mean, it's really not that great, but my food forest didn't skip a beat. It doesn't matter if I'm here or not. Uh, I come in and I tend to it because it's a little bit young, right? But we're at the level now where I can just kind of let it go and wonderful things are gonna happen. But I have 250 plus varieties of food producing plants in this garden and I measured it the other day. It is a 54 by 50 wide size garden. That's like the, it's not perfectly square, but it's almost square. And those are the dimensions. And um, it's not big, it's not big, but I have over 250 varieties of food producing uh, plants in here. Herbs, medicinals, food, uh, all sorts of wonderful things. My family could live off of this one area uh, once it's established easily it could support us. So uh, imagine what you could do with a full acre, right? Imagine what you could do with five acres and you planted a food forest. Those, that's what dreams are made of for me. So guys, it's easy. It's just go find those lists, pick one. There's not a wrong answer and plant it and it will be beautiful, it will be abundant, and it will work with itself, it'll, it'll find its balance. When you do this, the predator prey, uh, the predator pest balance will be achieved within about three to four years. You might see more pests one year as you're planting, you might see more predators another year, it will find its own balance and things will reach a homeostasis point around four to five years, um, but three to four years for the predator prey, uh, predator pest uh, balance, okay? Uh, five years to seven years is when a food forest becomes uh, fully mature. Uh, and, and I know people doing food forests that have done all of this stuff and they don't spray their fruit trees. 
Uh, they don't have to worry about doing anything. They just come in in the spring and they prune their fruit trees and that's it. And then they propagate. <laughs> they just keep making more. And that's basically my life right now. I'm at the stage where I'm just propagating because with all the different varieties that I have right now, I don't need to buy new varieties. I just need to propagate more of the varieties that I have. So guys, permaculture start. That's all you got to do. You just got to start. Okay. And then just keep watching videos on YouTube. You'll get new ideas. People have got all these awesome things that they're doing and you'll find what works well for your system and your property in your yard, wherever it is that you're planting and wonderful things are going to happen. Magical things, guys. Absolutely incredible things that are beyond your wildest dreams, right? So the old way, the annual vegetable garden, it's great. Hi, tried and true it's beautiful it produces wonderful things but the food forest that's where it's at and uh and that's what's going to change the world so check it out look at all the video videos online i've got plenty of videos on my channel for permaculture but don't just watch mine because mine is this very specific zone and you know there are so many other people doing food forests uh james prigioni he's doing a great food forest you can look at um uh, Jeff Lawton, he's doing a great stuff. Uh, Bill Mollison, anything you can find by him is really great. Um, there's a uh, Park Rose Permaculture, I think it is, up in uh, Oregon. They have a great channel. Look at these channels. Start. All you got to do is start. And guys, you cannot mess this up. It's, it's, it was overwhelming for me when I first looked at it, but you cannot mess it up it, it, as long as you just start and you just plant. So you guys, I hope this was encouraging to you. Uh, I hope you guys have an absolutely wonderful night. If you have questions about this, let me know. If there's specifics that you want me to go over, let me know. <laughs> the sun is going down. I got, I got excited. Sorry. <laughs> this is, this is my, my passion, uh, beyond a doubt. So, uh, let me know if you guys have any questions about anything. And you guys, if you could please hit that like button, the notification bell, the subscribe button, all those wonderful things. I'd appreciate that and stay blessed.